here with us today. We thank you, Lord, for the weather. We pray for those who are on their way coming that we bring them safely in Jesus' name. And all the requests were made concerning ourselves, our dedication the work, to the work of God. Help us to be faithful. In the work we are doing, help us to be faithful. Today, we want a great blessing from you. And as the man of God speaks the word of God to us, all those that, that have not been saved will be saved in Jesus' name. And whatever may be our needs, most of the time when we have serious needs, we carry it above God, which is wrong. All our needs will be brought to God. And any need that is brought to the Lord this morning, Father, we pray you will solve it for them in Jesus' name. As we start to worship you, I say our service in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we pray. We start the service this morning as we sing from our gospel hymns and songs, hymn number 49. Hymn number 49. Let others see Jesus in you. While passing through this world of sin, and others your life shall view. Be clean and pure without within. Let others see Jesus in you. Your life is a boot before their eyes. They are reading it through and through. Say, does it point them to the skies? Do others see Jesus in you? What joy will it will be at the set of sun? In mansions beyond that blue, to find some souls that you have won, let others see Jesus in you. Then live for Christ, both day and night. Be faithful, be brave and true, and lead the lost to life and light. Let others see Jesus in you. Let others see Jesus in you. Let others see Jesus in you. Keep telling the story. Be faithful and true. Let others see Jesus in you.
Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you very much for the grace you have given unto us to come before you. We thank you because it's a great privilege to be in the presence of the King of kings and the Lord of lords. As you have brought us together to feed us, to quicken us, and to prepare us to live with you in heaven, I pray that the grace to hear you, the grace to appropriate your word and allow your word to do the work you intend for our lives, you will multiply in every life in Jesus' name. I pray that we will hear, and not just hearing all the challenges we receive, we rise up to do what is your will for our lives in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because I know you have heard and answered our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Last week, in our study, we looked at the topic, Return from Babylonian Captivity. In the study, we learned how God raised up Cyrus in fulfillment of prophecies to proclaim freedom from the children, for the children of Israel in captivity, teaching us that every word of God is sure, that whatever God says he will do, he will definitely do it, and his promises are yea and amen in Jesus' name. This morning we are looking at lesson 890 in our search, the scripture class. And the topic is works. P. 
proof of true faith. Shall we say it together? Can we have a volunteer to recite the memory verse? Any hand? Yes, our sister. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. James chapter 2 verse 26. Thank you very much and God bless you. Shall we say it together at the count of two? One, two, go. Thank you. Our text is taken from James chapter 2. We are going to read from verse 14 to verse 26. Any fast reader from this side, somebody that can read very fast. Yes, let that sister read for us. James chapter 2 from verse 14 to 26 says, What does it profit, my brethren? Do a man say he has faith and, has, and have not work? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and des destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled. Notwithstanding, he give them not those things which are needful to the body. What does it profit? Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devil also believe and tremble. But we thou know, O vain man, that faith without work is dead. Was not Abraham our father justified by faith when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by faith was made, and by works was faith made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. He see there now that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Likewise also was not Rahab the Allot justified by works, when she had received the messenger, and had sent them out another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Thank you very much, and God bless you. In the first part of chapter 2 of the epistle according to St. James, we saw that partiality and favoritism is condemned amongst believers because maybe of their wealth, influence, and social status. As we come to the second part of our study, we are going to look at something that is very, very important, the place of works as evidence of true faith. Our text gives us a graphic illustration of the relationship between faith in Christ and the accompanying work after salvation. In verse 22, it says from our text, Seest thou how faith wrought with its works, and by works was faith made perfect. We are told in Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 8. Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 8. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. We got born again, and sinners get born again by putting their faith in the atonement of Christ. In verse 9, not of works, it's not by the good deeds, like alms giving, like building churches, or like traveling out of the country on pilgrimage to Rome or Israel. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Now verse 10, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, 
after we are born again, God expects good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. I want somebody from the choir to please explain the difference between faith and works in the life of a true believer. Anybody from yes, a brother risen up his hand. Faith in the life of a true believer means that he has accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord, surrendered, and then continued to live the Christian life. And the works expected from the true believer is such that after he has become born again, he surrenders and leaves to follow the footsteps of Christ. Thank you very much. We have three points to consider. Number one, the profession of false faith. And then number two, we look at the perfection of faith which works. And then finally, we look at the practice and demonstration of true faith. Point number one, the profession of false faith. We come back to our text, James chapter 2. I read verse 14. What does it, does it profit, my brethren, though a man say he has faith and have not works? Can faith save him? That's a big question. When somebody professes to have faith, and yet you look at his life, the life does not match the faith he professes in Christ. That shows us that any profession of faith that is not accompanied by practical deeds of righteousness is worthless and dead. Those who claim they have faith but maintain no works, no complementary works, are not genuine believers of Christ. They might even be preachers, like there are many preachers today. They might be miracle workers. Let's look at Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7 from verse 21. Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of God, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. The people that profess to be children of God, but you look at them in the neighborhood, you look at them in the places of work, there is no difference between them and those who are not yet born again. Their faith is dry. The faith that lacks work is only a head knowledge and never controls the heart or actions. What, another thing you will see that that kind of faith has no righteous fruits to show for it. It is boastful. Like these people, they were telling the Lord, we prophesied and we did wonderful works in thy name. Number four, that faith is ignorant and birthed of God's word, which is a source of genuine faith. Number five, that faith believes like the devil. You know the devil, like we read in our text, believes, but the devil trembles. Number six, that kind of faith does not lay his or her life down for the Savior. That faith is cold, lifeless, blind, sinful, and damnable. In Titus chapter 1, verse 16, Titus chapter 1, in verse 16, they profess that they know God, but in works they deny him, being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. What are the main deficiencies of dead faith? Anybody from the center here? What are those things that are lacking in dead faith? 
Any hand up? Dead faith walk without righteousness. Thank you very much. Dead faith is heartless, selfish, and pitiless. In James chapter 2 from verse 15. James chapter 2 from verse 15. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warm and filled. Notwithstanding, ye give them not those things which are needful to the body. What doth it profit? Even so, faith, if it has not works, is dead, being alone. Let's look at example of this, demonstrated in the parable of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in Luke chapter 30. Luke chapter 10, rather verse 30. Luke chapter 10 in verse 30. And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that, that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise, a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed on on the other side they could not care for the wounded man the same thing happens when somebody professes to be a child of god and he sees other in need and he will say i will pray for you go god will answer your prayers that is not the manifestation of the real faith we are to care for those that are in need and for those people that have dry faith, selfish and pitiless faith, Christ sounds a note of warning unto them. In Matthew chapter 25, verses 41 and 42, Matthew 25, verses 41 and 42, then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepare for the devil and his angels. Look at it. For I was an hungered, and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. Our faith will be living faith and not pitiless faith in Jesus' name. We go to point number two. The perfection of faith with works. James chapter 2 from verse 17. James 2 from verse 17. Even so, faith, if it has not works, is dead. Being alone, ye a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God that doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But will thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Faith and good works are inseparable. They blend together to produce scriptural belief in God. Neither strong faith in God's existence nor works alone can make up a complete Christian faith. When somebody turns away from his sins, he becomes a new creature. All things are passed away. After that, God calls him the light of the world. In Matthew chapter 5, from verse 14. Matthew chapter 5, from verse 14. The new creature is referred to. Jesus Christ said, you are the light of the world. The city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and he giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. 
I read from verse 14. Philippians chapter 2, verse 14. Do all things without murmuring and disputings, that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. The world is dark. In the offices, you see corruption, pollution. In the society, you see things that are terrible. In the neighborhood, you see people fighting. But if a child of God who professes faith in Christ is still boxing in the neighborhood, is still stealing in the office, is still living immorally around him, that person is not showing that is the light. We are to shine forth to the world, to show them that the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared unto all men, teaching them to deny worldly loss and ungodliness and to live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, that they will know that it is possible for a transformed, redeemed man or woman to live above sin. That grace will be made abundant unto all of us in Jesus' name. Question three, how can believers' faith become perfect? How can believers' faith become perfect? Yes, my brother. Believers' faith can become perfect when we um, maintain Christ-like uh, benevolence, hospitality, and maintain good works. Thank you. In Titus chapter 3, verse 8, Titus chapter 3, in verse 8, this is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in Christ may be careful, diligent, may be careful in the midst of the people that are perverse, may be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. We go to point number three before we pray. The practice and demonstration of true faith. We turn to James chapter 2 from verse 21. James chapter 2 from verse 21. Was not Abraham a father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? In verse 25. Likewise, also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way. A final, as a final proof of James' teaching, he used two Bible characters, Abraham and Rahab. Abraham's sacrifice of Isaac was not what justified him. Before God tested him, he had already believed in God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. In Genesis chapter 15, Genesis 15 from verse 5 and verse 6, and he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. In verse 6, And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. As we can say today that, we can say if Abraham was living, that he was born again. He was already a child of God. And now in chapter 22 of Genesis, Chapter 22, in verse 1. And it came to pass, after these things, that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here am I. And then he said, Take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou love, loveth, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. Abraham, in obedience, went to offer his son until God said no, and he passed the test. So his work was demonstrated his faith in God. Also, we saw a woman called Rahab in Joshua chapter 2. In Joshua, 
chapter 2. I read from verse 6. Joshua chapter 2. In verse 6. But she had brought them up to the roof of the house. But she had brought them up to the roof of the house and hid them with the stalks of flax, which she had laid in order of the roof. And the men pursued after them the way of Jordan unto the forts. After them, after them we are gone out, they shut the gate. And before they were laid down, she came up unto them upon the roof. Listen to her. And she said unto them, I know that the Lord has given you the land, and that your terror is falling upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt, and what you did unto the kings of the Amorites, that we are on the other side, Jordan, Sihon and Og, whom ye utterly destroyed. And as soon as we heard these things, our hearts did melt. This woman had already believed in God of the Israelites before she demonstrated it, justified it by hiding the spies that Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. God only accepts those who believe, not because of any good thing they are doing or not because of any good thing that he sees in them, but because of Christ's righteousness. It is this unmerited righteousness of God that he puts a man that makes him a Christian, a child of God. And after that, we are to live the way Christ lived. What Christ would have done if we are to be here on earth should be our goal to do them. There are other Bible characters that demonstrated good works after they were born again. Question 5. Mention other Bible characters who demonstrated faith by good works. Yes, anybody from this side? Somebody very close to the front, so because of our time. We have Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus. Thank you. We can see people like Zacchaeus, like Lydia, like the jailer in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 26. Zacchaeus, for instance, after he accepted Jesus Christ and welcomed Jesus Christ into his house, voluntarily, he was not compelled. Jesus Christ did not tell him about what he had stolen, but he realized that he had been unjust in collecting what did not belong to him, and he voluntarily made restitution. He said, whatever I have taken, I'm going to restore fourfold. And we can also see the good Samaritan that took care of the man that was wounded by robbers. After you are born again, there must be a difference. Let people see Christ in you as we sang in our song this morning. You are a peculiar person, different from the people of the world. God expects you to be the light that will attract other people. So that when you go to preach the gospel, or other people go to preach the gospel, your life will not cancel the world that is being preached. God will help us in Jesus' name. Let's rise up as we go to the Lord in prayers. I want you to commit yourself into the hands of God. Examine yourself. Are you alive in Christ? Do you have a living faith? Is your faith alive or dead faith? Examine yourself. You can decide this morning to become a child of God if you are not born again. If you have been a church goer, a religious man, no good works, you can commit your heart to Christ this morning and ask him to cleanse you, to purify you, and quicken you. Are you a child of God? Be steadfast, be unmovable, because you are going to receive a reward if you continue to abound in the works of the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Our Father, we thank you very much for what you have taught us this morning. You have called us the light of the world, the salt of the earth. How I pray for every one of us 
that wherever we find ourselves, whether in the market, in the place, people will see our faith demonstrated by good works in Jesus' name. If there is anything in our lives that tends to cancel your word, I pray this morning, perform a spiritual surgery in every heart and take away those things in Jesus' name. Prepare us for the return of Christ. Thank you, Father, because I know you are fed and answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Excuse me. You have any question on what we have been taught this morning? This is the time for question and answer. If you have any question, you can come to the front. You can come to the front of the hall where you are. If you have any question on what we have been taught on works and faith, Is there anybody coming out? Do you have any question on what we have been taught? This is the time for question and answer. You can come out and ask your question. Nobody? The teaching this morning is very clear. And um, actually, I will not have expected questions because the teaching is straightforward, it's very clear. And all of us here to examine ourselves on the contents of the teaching we have received in the book of James, chapter 2, verse 14. What does it profit, my brethren? What does it profit, my brethren? Do a man say, he has faith, and have not works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and enough of you say unto him, Depart in peace, be ye warm and filled, not with his standing. Ye give him not those things which he needed is needful to the body. What does it profit? This is a big question to the church. A big question to us as individuals to examine ourselves on how we support our faith with good works, with giving, with love. Look at us as we are here this morning. You may think we are many. There are people who should be here this morning. If somebody has shown the love of Christ to him, somebody wants to come to serve the Lord, he has no money. And the whole district cannot provide money for that person to come to serve the Lord. Maybe we have cars, we join our cars. We join our vehicles, and these many people are left at home, and they are praying, Lord, help me, give me money. How do we account for that? Or somebody in need of dressing, need of clothes, is sick, and we visit him and say, 
Keep well. Be praying. Eat. Drink. We'll be all right. Without leaving him anything to survive. What food will he eat? What drink will he take? The lesson is very crucial to our faith today. We are not, in some cases, our brother's keeper. And that is only where we resemble somebody that we should not resemble, Cain. Oh, many people are lying down sick. No care for them. And when you look at the early church, you see that the early church was a caring church. In the book of Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 2, reading from verse 41, Acts chapter 2, verse 41. They, then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Walk, faith. This verse I've read. Occasion come. When we, are, we have great meetings, we have crusades, we have retreats, and we have converts, and we call on leaders, please. So, so they, we are taking these people to the water to be baptized. And when you get to the place, you hardly find leaders. It says in verse 42, and they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking of bread and prayers. They steadfastly continue in the doctrine. You, you won't miss a doctrine because everybody is always together in fellowship, giving, teaching, exhorting. But how much of that do we do? Our art fellowship system is cracking because of personal interest, because of personal desires. People even think that they have, they have outgrown our fellowship. They don't go to our fellowship again. But when you look at the foundation of the church, you see that they are always together. Great and small. They are always together. How can you say you are grown above our fellowship if you're a child of God? He says, and they continually, they continue steadfastly in the apostle doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and prayers. May the Lord return us to the early church experience in Jesus' name. I think you will say amen to that prayer. Yeah. In verse 43, and fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. I tell you something. When we started the fellowship in this church, the area leaders, the zonal leaders, the coordinators, they didn't have much to do. Why? Because in the Ash Fellowship, great miracles were happening. Testimonies, wonderful testimonies, because the people were together. Why are we separated ourselves from our Fellowship? This is an, an ordination, a, 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 a thing God has given us for where our problems will be solved. And fear came upon every soul. And many wonders <coughs> and signs were done by the, by the apostles. I pray if you come to that again. That in our house fellowships, lay people will rise up and walk. 
black people will see. Great things will start happening in our fellowship in Jesus' name. In verse 44, and all that believed were together and had all things common. They are not divided. You are belong to the brother so and so. I belong to brother so and so. You belong to sister so and so. I belong to sister so and so. In the same church, in the same church, how will this all look at you when he comes? When we have divided the church by saying, I'm for this, I'm for that, and you are not for Christ. In the scriptures where I read, all that believe were together. It's possible for us to be together. We may not live in the same house. We may not sleep on the same bed. We may not go to the, to the same office, but we can be together in spirit. We can speak to ourselves on phone. We can be continually motivating ourselves, making ourselves ready for heaven. So, in verse 45, it says, in verse 45, and so <clears throat> their possessions and goods. Why did they sell their possessions? Why did they sell their goods? And parted them all to all men, and every man, as every man had need. We don't even need that one this time. We don't need to sell our property this time. God has overblessed us that with what we have, we can care for people in the church. The poor people are suffering, are crying, and the rich people are not bothered. This will not be the case. We will change in Jesus' name. I say we are going to change in Jesus' name. In your district, look at people who need help. So many people. Bring help to them. And somebody who needs help today may not need help tomorrow. Somebody who is poor today may not be poor tomorrow. That is why you help people. So that when they become, they are free from their poverty. They can be an instrument to helping other people. But if they are, if they are, if they are isolated, they are not cared for, and suddenly they become rich, how will they care for other people? Let us show love and affection. Verse 46 says, and they continue, continue daily with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread from out to out, did hit their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. The poor, the rich, the educated, the uneducated, they were together. And they, 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 do have no, they don't have any care of this world because they are cared for. And uh, in verse 47, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church how many times? How many times? The Lord added to the church daily in our district. How does the Lord add to our district? Is it daily? A whole month, no visitor. A whole month, no visitor. And we complain. They are not willing to come. We are, doing, we are not doing what God expects us to do. To care. To show work with our faith. We may have faith, but where's our work? Where's our caring? Where's our, our effort to bring others to Christ? So many people have been brought to the Lord through caring and doing good works. And I'm sure, by God's grace, we are going to bring more people to the Lord this year in Jesus' name. If I ask a question now and say, this last year, how many people what we, did you bring to the Lord? We will see people who didn't bring a single person, a single soul to the Lord. But they are very faithful. I'm sorry, they are very religious. They do everything. Singing are there, there. Everything they are there. No single soul. What are we going to give as a re report to the Lord when he comes? 
They did not help us to be dwellers of the world in Jesus' name. Because of our time, and we want you to rise up now and talk to the Lord. Faith without work. Coming to church, where's your brother? Where's Abel, your brother? You're hardly to the church, fine. But where's your Abel? Where's your wife? If a man cannot show love in his family to his wife, that's a serious problem. Pray that God will revive us. Pray that God will revive us. That we will have bowers, bowers of compassion. We will walk, we will have faith, and we will see our works. That children <coughs> will, will have stopped going to school because no money. Are we sure in the old district we cannot have a uh, such children? God wants us to change and be like the early church. In fact, people were afraid of them. People were frightened because of their life. I know that if we live right, many more people will come to this church in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. We thank you, Father, for the short word of exhortation which we have taken from the book of James on walking with faith. Help us, Lord, not to walk in vain. Help us, Lord, that on the last day we will not receive a bad report of our activities in Jesus' name. Thank you for answering our prayers. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Where peace and justice reign, we will stand as children of the promise. We will fix our eyes on Him, our souls reward till the race is finished and the work is done. We 
we continue the service as you sing from our gospel hymns and songs, 122. Hymn number 122. Two. Somebody needs your love. Out in the darkness of sorrow and sin, somebody needs your love. Led by the master, that's so you may win. Somebody needs your love. Many are helpless and wait for your call. Somebody needs your love. Show them that Jesus is all and in all. Somebody needs your love. Someone is tempted to turn from the right. Somebody needs your love. Longing for courage and strength for the fight. Somebody needs your love. Some are downhearted. In sorrow, the room. Somebody needs your love. Many are sighing for heaven and home. Somebody needs your love. Somebody needs your love. Somebody needs your love. Someone in sadness, yearning for gladness. Somebody needs your love.
gospel hymns and songs, 223. Hymn number 223. I gave my life for thee, my precious blood I shed, that thou might ransom me and quicken from the dead. I gave, I gave my life for thee. What art thou giving for me? I spent long years for thee in weariness and woe, that an eternity of joy thou might know. I spent, I spent long years for thee, what hast thou spent one for me? My father's home of light, my glory circled soon. I left for earthly night, for wandering sad and lone. I left, I left it all for thee, as thou left all for me. I suffered much for thee, more than they, thy tongue can tell of, bit, um, of bitterest agony. To rescue thee from hell, I born, I born it for thee. What hast thou done, born for me? Lord, let my life be given, and every moment spent for God, for souls, for heaven, and all her style be rent. Thou givest, thou givest thyself for me. Now I give all to thee.
will remain standing as we pray to the Lord, answering him the questions he has asked us in this song. How much have we done for the Lord? This year is still new. We can do more for him. For past years, we thank God for every, the little we are able to do. But this new year, great things is expected from us. Thousands of souls. Many are the cat healed. Many blind see. Many believe. Believers sanctified. Pray that God will help you to achieve God's goal for your life. God has a goal in the life of everybody. You don't need to fight anybody for anything because you have enough. God has a goal for everybody. If you have not been saved, as we are here this morning, you are avoiding the goal of God for your life. Repent and give your life to Christ. And God will reveal his will for you. Reveal, God will reveal his will for everybody who wishes, who cares of what he wants you to do for him this year. You don't have time to be jealous about anybody. You don't have time to be looking to somebody else's assignment. God has given you your own assignment. Go. 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 And you will go in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we pray. The Lord tell us in the book of Genesis that his people do not come to him void. And in the, Luke, the book of Luke chapter 6, the Bible says, give, and it shall be given to you. Luke 6, 38. Now is the time to give our tithe and offering to the Lord. Our ushers are beside you. Our ushers are beside you to collect the offering. Still in the mood of prayer, give your offering through the ushers that are be be behind you or before you. But before you give, let us pray. Raise your offerings up. We can pray for, for them. Father, we thank you very much for giving us the strength. Many in the hospital, they cannot walk. For giving us the strength to walk and bring something to your house. Lord, we are grateful. We pray that whatever we are giving to you today, accept it from our hand and use it for your work in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father, for answering our prayers. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Whilst we continue to give our offering, we will remain in the mode of prayer. And we're going to pray this time for our nation. You all know what happened yesterday. Let's pray that whatever the devil is doing, the will of God will prevail for this nation in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. Many have prayed, many have fasted, 
and we wish, we believe God's will, God's will, God's will will be done in this country. The, the gospel will have free flow, free movement. All places where the gospel has not reached, all places where the gospel has been driven out by violence, will become settling place, settling ground for the gospel. The gospel will get to every place, we overpower every place, and the God of glory, God of love, will be glorified in this nation. God will be glorified in this nation. This is a nation of God. Missionaries found this nation. The Lord will reign. We put us under the plan of the enemy. We forfeit the plan of the devil. In this country, Jesus will reign. The devil will be put to run. In Jesus' name, we pray. We want to pray also for those in charge of elections in this country that the Lord will assist them. The Lord will open their eyes and they will do the will of God in all they are doing in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. In Jesus' name, we pray. We want to pray for our church. This church is peculiar. It's a special church that whatever may be the discussion going on about the election or anything, this church will remain faithful to the Lord. This church will not be carried away by election news. It will be remain fervent to the Lord in Jesus' name. Let us pray. We will shine more this time. We'll be more effective in evangelism this time. We'll be able to reach out better this time. God will give us encouragement, joy in serving him. The door of everything will be open to the church the church will not need them for anything from government. The Lord will provide for our needs. In Jesus' name, we pray. We want to pray for our pastor this time that the Lord will strengthen him the more. The Lord will give him more courage. Amen. 
that as we preach the word of God without looking at faces, we will continue to uphold this style of leadership in Jesus' name. Let us pray for him. In Jesus' name, we pray. We are very happy to see that his family never obstructed his ministry. We want to pray specially for the family that the Lord will continue to bless them. His children, his wife, they continue to see the mercy and goodness of the Lord in their life in Jesus' name. Let us pray. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Father, we are very grateful to you this morning for what we are doing in our lives and what we are doing in our nation. We believe you will do the best for us in Jesus' name. Amen. Whatever the devil does or does not do, your perfect will will be fulfilled on this nation in Jesus' name. Amen. We are praying for ourselves, we will not be like others who would at this time give up worship of God to election, election and election matters. We pray that we will be rigid. We keep sound obedient to the word of God in Jesus' name. We pray for our pastor, that boldness we have given him. We cherish it, Lord. We like it. We pray you continue to uphold him. To keep on in boldness, preaching the gospel without looking here or there in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Lord, for the wife of our pastor and the children. We have never had of any problem with them. Therefore, we cooperated with our pastor and everything is moving well. We pray they will continue this attitude in Jesus' name. And as they continue, you will mightily bless each and every one of them in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for answering our prayers. We magnify your holy name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. You are welcome once more to our service today. And we pray that the Lord will keep you to come next time. If the Lord tarries, in Jesus' name. In this church, we have some programs. But because, before I announce these programs, I know that some people come here this morning for the first time. And I will be happy to receive them on behalf of the pastor, if they will rise up on their feet, if I can see them rise up in, stand up on their feet. Those who are coming for the first time, please uh, kindly rise up on your feet. You're, no, we, we didn't ask you to clap for anybody. We didn't ask you to clap. We, didn't, we have not speak, speak, finished speaking. We are clapping. We are asking them to stand up and what, what the church has prepared for them to be given to them by our ushers. Our ushers should give them what the church has prepared for them. After that, you feel 
your name and address. You fill your name and address in a way that we can easily identify you when we are visiting you. After you have done that, you can sit down. The announcement we have is that every week we have three, or can I say four, important meetings. Already we are in one of them, which is Sunday worship service. This is a combined, combined service for Alimosho Agege Keja Bagada. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't remember the other two. But I'm giving you the information that this is a combined service where we meet together once in a while. And in this combined service, we have time for searching the scriptures. We have time for asking questions. And our Father and the Lord will minister finally to us. Also, on Monday, we have Bible study. We have started the book of Mark. And if you were there in the last Bible study, and one before it, you will, you will be surprised at what God is hidden for us in the Bible. Great things, mighty things, which the Lord has revealed to our pastor to teach us. We expect to from the Bible study tomorrow. And apart from this hall where we are having combined service, in our various places we have come, we have our small, small churches where you can go and be a mem member of that church. And also, you should be a member of a house fellowship because it is very easy to, to trace anybody when you are a member of the house fellowship. We want everybody to be a member of the house fellowship. And Thursday is our revival time when we are taught how to evangelize, how to preach, and we are revived. You need to come to the next Thursday meeting and you'll be wonderfully blessed in Jesus' name. The fourth womb, which I said, I don't know whether to call it fourth or not, is the house fellowship. This is not a service, uh, a service like this. It's a place where you can feel at home, a home sources, home fellowship, where you can feel at home, where you can talk to your brother, where you can talk to your sister, where needs are met. When I say where needs are met, you know that sometimes we pray for something, God do this for me, God do this for me, and eventually, if you are at home in that house where you are, you may not see any sign. But when you go out to call somebody to ask fellowship, surprisingly, that is what I'm saying because it has happened to me before. Surprisingly, your needs will be met. So our fellowship is very, very important. And I pray God will give you the grace to go to our fellowship in Jesus' name. Other announcements will pass to us in our various churches. Thank you, and God bless you.
Before the Sunday message today, we shall have a brief period of scripture reading. The Gospel according to St. Mark. The Gospel according to St. Mark. Chapter 9. Chapter 9. And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you that there be some of them that stand here which shall not taste of death till they have seen the kingdom of God come with power. And after six days, Jesus taketh with him Peter and James and John, and leadeth them up into an high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his raiment became shining, exceeding white as snow, so as no fuller on earth can white them. And there appeared unto them Elias with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. And Peter answered and said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here, and let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elias. For he wist not what to say, for they were sore afraid. And there was a cloud that overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my beloved Son, hear him. And suddenly, when they had looked round about, they saw no man any more save Jesus only with themselves. And as they came down from the mountain, he charged them that they should tell no man what things they had seen till the Son of Man were risen from the dead. And they kept that saying with themselves, questioning one with another what the rising from the dead should mean. And they asked him, saying, Why say the scribes that Elias must first come? And he answered and told them, Elias verily cometh first and restoreth all things and how it is written of the Son of Man that he must suffer many things and be set at naught. But I say unto you that Elias is indeed come, and they have done unto him whatsoever they listed, as it is written of him. And when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them, and the scribes questioning with them. And straightway all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed, and running to him saluted him. And he asked the scribes, what question ye with them? And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. And wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him. And he foameth and gnasheth with his teeth and pineth away. And I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. He answereth him and saith, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him, and when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming. And he asked his father, How long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, Of a child, and oft times it hath cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him. And he was as one dead, insomuch that many said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he was come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could not we cast him out? And he said unto them, This kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. And they departed thence and passed through Galilee, and he would not that any man should know it. For he taught his disciples and said unto them, The Son of Man is delivered into the hands of men, and they shall kill him. And after that he is killed, he shall rise the third day. But they understood not that saying, and were afraid to ask him. And he came to Capernaum, and being in the house, he asked them, What was it that ye disputed among yourselves by the way? But they held their peace, for by the way they had disputed among themselves who should be the greatest. And he sat down and called the twelve, and saith unto them, If any man desire to be first... The same shall be last of all, and servant of all. And he took a child, and set him in the midst of them. 
And when he had taken him in his arms, he said unto them, Whosoever shall receive one of such children in my name receiveth me. And whosoever shall receive me receiveth not me, but him that sent me. And John answered him, saying, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and he followeth not us. And we forbade him, because he followeth not us. But Jesus said, Forbid him not, for there is no man which shall do a miracle in my name that can lightly speak evil of me. For he that is not against us is on our part. For whosoever shall give you a cup of water to drink in my name, because ye belong to Christ, verily I say unto you, he shall not lose his reward. And whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believe in me, it is better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck, and he were cast into the sea. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire, where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. For every one shall be salted with fire, and every sacrifice shall be salted with salt. Salt is good, but if the salt have lost his saltness, wherewith will ye season it? Have salt in yourselves, and have peace one with another. May God help us to be doers of the word. Amen.
That's not a liar for me. A true disciple of the Lord is all I want to be.
Praise the Lord. I welcome everyone to our service this morning in Jesus' name. And I pray that the joy of worshiping the Lord will be your portion in Jesus' name. The presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy. Where are you this morning? I said, where are you this morning? In the presence of the Lord, there'll be fullness of joy in Jesus' name. Nothing will decrease your joy. It will multiply your joy in His presence in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this hour. Thank you for this moment. Thank you for the worship. Thank you for your word. Lord, we pray that you give us real faith. Abiding faith. Transforming faith. Saving faith. Sanctifying faith. Empowering faith in Jesus' name. We pray that our faith will not be dead. Our faith will not be shallow. Our faith will not be traditional. Our faith will not be theoretical. It will be faith that works by love in Jesus' name. Confirm your word in every life this morning. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We're coming to James chapter 2, and I'm reading from verse 14. James chapter 2, reading from verse 14. What does it profit, my brethren? Do a man say he has faith and has not works? Can faith save him? What does it profit, brothers and sisters? And children of God, though a man says he has saving faith and he does not have the fruit of that saving faith. A man says he has sanctifying faith and he does not have the proof and the evidence of that sanctifying faith. A man says he has a transforming faith, a faith that comes into life and transforms that life changes that life and we cannot see the evidence of a changed life what does it profit then brothers and sisters we man may say it's just profession it's just expression that has no experience that has no deep root in the faith it says if a man says he professes he has faith and he has not works he has no deeds he has no doing, he has no fruit, he has no proof. Can that faith save him? If you say you are forgiven, prove it by the life you live. If you say you are saved, prove it by the life you live. If you say you believe in the Lord and that you have turned away from the world and you have turned unto the Lord, prove it. By the life you live. If you say you have faith for sanctification, you have sanctifying faith, prove it by the love you demonstrate unto God. If you say you have that empowering faith that you have been to Pentecost and he has given you that power of the Holy Ghost, you'll need to prove that by the expression, by the exploits you do. Through that empowering faith in verse 15, if a brother or your sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, depart in peace, say unto them, depart in peace. Be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding, ye give them not those things, those things that prove that you love them. Those things that prove that you have practical faith. Those things that prove that you have the faith to back up your expression of blessing. God bless you. God bless you. Depart in peace and be warmed and filled. Notwithstanding, you give them not those things which are needful to the body needful to his existence and needful to his health and needful to his satisfaction 
and needful to a life well worth living. What does it promise? Profit. Even so, faith, if it has not works, even so, faith, if it does not have fruit, even so, faith, if it does not have practical evidences, dead being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works. You cannot do that. Faith is invisible, it's only seen, it's only so uh, shown by the works you do, by the evidence, by what he produces. He says, And I will show you my faith by my works. You know my faith. If it's strong, you see the kind of fruit I bear. If that faith is great, you see the kind of fruit I bear. If that faith is permanent, perennial, always there, you'll see from the outward expression of my life that that faith is there, is always present there, and it is preeminent there, and it is permanent there. It says, I will show you my faith by my works, by the things I do. Thou believest, there is one God, okay, that does well, but please understand, the devils also believe there is one God and they tremble. Well, but will thou know, O vain man, unprofitable man, shallow man, religious but not righteous man, that faith without works is dead. Was not Abraham a father justified, revealed by works, established by works, made known that he's a friend of God by works, when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Do you see, seest thou, how faith wrought with his works? And by works was faith made perfect. By works, faith was made matured. Faith was made evident. And faith was made complete. And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. Called the friend of God. And was like his friend, God. God is active. He was active. And God is profitable. He was profitable. God is loving. He was loving. God is dependable. He was dependable. And God is faithful. And the man was faithful. You see then how that by works... A man is justified, not by faith only, not by empty faith standing in isolation by itself. Likewise also was not Rehab the harlot justified by works. When she had received the messengers and sent them out another way, for the body without the spirit is dead. What will the hand do without the spirit? In achieve, it proves dead. And what will the mouth say? How can the mouth talk without the spirit? And the silent mouth is the evidence that the death that are, has taken place. And the immovable feet never going anywhere, just stagnant, just dead. It's an evidence the spirit is gone out. It says, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Where there is faith, there'll be accompanying works. Where there is faith, 
there will be abiding works. Where there is faith, there will be appropriate works. And it is brought out in that line of the song, if you say you are forgiven, if you say you are saved, if you say you have met the Lord and you are connected with the Lord, stop saying, stop professing, provide by the life you live. This morning as we look at the scripture, already it's clear from what we have read. There is lively faith, faith that makes you come alive. People did not know you before. You didn't touch anybody's life before. You didn't turn anything around before. You didn't receive anything from heaven before. But now you have faith and we can tell, we can see. There's a living, abiding, appropriate faith that brings out works, that brings out fruit, that brings out the expression that leads to the experience. On the other hand, there is dead faith. It's inactive. It does nothing. It makes no change in a man. There's no transformation. There's no difference between the past and the present. Just dead. As a dead man does not move, he does not move. As a dead man does not cry, he does not cry. As a dead man does not laugh, he does not laugh. As a dead man does not do anything and remains in that place, is helpless. You have to carry him. And there's only one place you can carry him to. You carry him to the grave. So dead faith has no action. Dead faith has no activity. And dead faith has no evidence by which we we'll know that faith is there. And as you count the population of a country, and you don't count the dead men, you do not count dead faith as anything. As you are counting the number of your children, and you don't count those ones who have died, so is dead faith. You cannot count those who have dead faith among the children of God. There's lively faith, there's active faith, there's productive faith, and there is practical, positive, progressive faith. On the other hand, there's an active faith that is totally dead. Dead faith characterizes dead souls. Dead faith characterizes dead backsliders. Dead faith characterizes dead church people, church members. They have nothing to show for the faith they profess. I pray your faith will not be a dead faith. My faith will not be a dead faith. My faith will be active. My faith will be loving. My faith will produce good abiding fruit. Yours will do in Jesus' name. Today we come to the message, the convincing proof of saving faith. The convincing proof of saving faith. There are three things we're looking at as we look at this passage. Number one, the emptiness and deadness of faith without works. The emptiness and the deadness of faith without works. Point number two, the evidence and the discernment of faith through works. The works we do, the deeds we produce, the life we live, the things we give to other people, and the sacrifice we make unto God, the expression of our faith in works, the evidence and discernment of faith through works. Number three, the exploits and the demonstration of faith with works. The exploits and the demonstration of faith with works. 
Number one, the emptiness and the deadness of faith without works. Come back to James chapter 2, verse 17. Even so, faith, if it has not works, is dead being alone. Look at verse 20. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Verse 26. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Faith without works is dead also. And when it says faith without works is dead also, actually, the one who possesses only faith, faith alone, faith alone, faith alone, faith is the key. And faith is what I have. But there is no works, there are no deeds, there is no fruit, there's no transformation. And the fruit of the Spirit is not there. Obedience to the Word of God is not there. He's saying that man is a dead man. Dead face, dead follower. I'm following Christ, but he has dead face. I'm one of the faithful members of the body of Christ, but he has dead face. The man is dead. Look at the scriptures. I'm looking at... Genesis chapter 20, and I'm reading from verse 3. Genesis chapter 20, verse 3. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night, and said unto him, Behold, thou art but a dead man. Thou art but a dead man. For the woman which thou hast taken, for she is a man's wife. How many people profess, I believe, I believe. I'm a child of God. I have faith in the Lord. I believe in Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe in Jesus Christ. He is my personal Savior. But they have another man's wife with them. And you hear the word of God that this is what you do. Give the woman to her husband. No, they don't want to do that. I believe in God already. And my faith in God cancels every activity and cancels obedience. Abimelech, behold, thou art but a dead man. For the woman which thou hast taken, for she is a man's wife. We're looking at Proverbs. Chapter 21, Proverbs, chapter 21, I'm reading from verse 16. Proverbs 21, verse 16, the man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. There is a congregation in the sight of God. It's the congregation of the dead. Why? Well, they say they follow Christ. They say they believe in Christ. They say it was at a crusade that they raised up their hands and they became believers. It says, but no, it wanders away from the path of understanding. He wanders away from the understanding of Scripture. Whenever you talk about duty, whenever you talk about the fruit of repentance, and whenever you talk about the evidence of salvation, he says, I don't know about that. I don't want to know about that. All I know is I believe in Christ. I have faith in Christ. But he is in the congregation of the dead. He has Dead faith. We're looking at First Timothy chapter 5. First Timothy chapter 5. And we're reading from verse 6. First Timothy chapter 5. We're reading from verse 6. In verse 6, but she 
that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. She doesn't accept the message of the word of God. He that will be and she that will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. She doesn't accept, he doesn't accept the word of the Lord. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man, if any woman loves the things of the world, the love of the Father is not in him. I believe in God. I don't care about, I can look like the world and drink like the world and I can do everything the world is doing. All I know is, I believe, I believe, I believe in Christ. Dead faith produces a dead man. Dead faith produces a dead woman. And dead faith produces a dead nominal Christian. Dead faith produces a dead nominal church goer. But she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. Revelation chapter 3. In Revelation chapter 3, I read from verse 1. Revelation chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 1. It tells us here, from the leaves of Jesus Christ himself, and unto the angel of the church in Sadi's right. What a name, what a title, angel. What a position, what a privilege, angel. And what recognition, angel. To the angel of the church in Sadi's right. These things, says he, that has the seven spirits of God, the perfect, complete, Spirit of God and the seven stars referring to all the churches perfect and complete I know thy works that thou hast a name that thou livest and art dead see it is possible to carry about that face the face that does nothing the face that does only what she was doing before conversion, so-called. And the thing she was doing, he was doing before he said, I place my faith in Christ. And the Lord looks at that and he says, I know your works. But we say that faith without works is dead. And this person already has works. And Jesus is saying, Thou hast a name that thou livest and art dead. And look at Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go unto perfection. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from, tell me, dead works. Dead works. There are dead works. They deaden the man himself. And there is nothing that inspires him. Is dead. Even the works are dead works. Have you found the people that speak to you, they want to encourage you, but their words bring no encouragement. The words are dead words. They fall flat. They deaden you. They discourage you. You're just there. Have you, have you found the people that, you know, and they try to make up a smile, and they smile at you, but it's plastic. It's dead. It's not coming from the spirit. The soul is detached. The spirit is detached from that smile. Have you found the people that walk? Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Rise up and let's go. And they sluggishly get up and they walk. You are walking. Your mind is there. Your heart is there. Your focus is there. Your vision is there. They are walking alongside. Their heart is not there. 
The mind is not there. There's no goal. There's no destination. Dead work. There are dead works. And Jesus said, I know your works. What kind of works? So dead, it makes you dead even though you claim to be alive. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from, tell me, dead works. I'm sure you found people who try, but you know, when the faith is dead, every other thing is dead. I don't want people to know that, you know, I'm just a dead log of wood. That I don't have the spirit. And I don't have the joy, the joy of living and the excitement of living for God. And they try, they try to copy the believer. They try to copy the saints. But it doesn't work. It falls down flat. The voice is dead. You're hearing something, but there's no power. And there's no spirit, and there's no inspiration, and there's no enlightenment from what you're hearing. They're just trying to do something, trying to say something. It's dead. And that's why the Lord said that there are people that claim to have faith, but the faith standing alone. The faith by itself does not have the fruit. It is dead because it has no works. The emptiness and the deadness of faith without works. We're coming to Isaiah chapter 58. Isaiah chapter 58. I read from verse 2. I say 58, reading from verse 2. Faith without works. I may follow of Jesus Christ. We've heard that for too long. Stop saying, start doing. Show that faith. Demonstrate that faith. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 58, verse 1. Cry aloud. Spear not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression, and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily, and delight to know my ways, as a nation that did righteousness, as a nation, like a nation, this copycat, as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinances of justice. They take the light in approaching to God. And yet it says, cry aloud and lift up your voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgressions. They claim to be saved, but they're still sinners. They claim to have faith, saving faith, but they still have sinful action and sinful lifestyle. Isaiah chapter 29, reading from verse 13. Isaiah 29, Verse 13, wherefore the Lord said, For as much as these people draw near me with their mouth, they say with their mouth, they profess just with their mouth, and with their lips do honor me, but they have removed their heart far from me, 
and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. You can tell all they have is um, faith that is dead, making a profession, but not having the reality of the life. Jeremiah chapter 8. Jeremiah chapter 8, reading from verse 4. Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 4. It says in verse 4, moreover, thou shalt say unto them, Thus says the Lord, shall they fall and not arise? Shall they turn away and not return? It's talking about people that were saved before, long ago. But eventually, they fell into sin. And maybe the sin is known to other people. Maybe the sin is not known to other people. They just find that on their own, voluntarily, they withdraw from the congregation of the people of God. Where you used to see them, you cannot see them. And when you meet them on the way, you still say, sister, sister. When you meet them on the way, you still say, brother, brother. They carry the name. They've lost the nature. They carry the title. But there's no transformation again. It says, they are falling and they refuse to rise up. They turn away and they refuse to return. Why then is this people of Jerusalem leading back by perpetual backsliding? They're still at Jerusalem. They're still at the headquarters. But there's perpetual permanent backsliding. They hold fast deceit and they refuse to return. They deceive themselves and they refuse to return. I hearkened and heard but they speak not aright. No man repented of his wickedness. They say, I'm still all right. I'm still in the faith. I still believe. I have only one God. This God is my God. And this Jesus is my Savior. But they have not repented of the weakness they fell into. Saying, what have I done? They have not said that. Everyone turned to his own cause, as the horse rushes into the battle. Yea, the stock in the heaven knows appointed times, and the turtle and the crane and the swallow observe the time of their coming. But my people know not the judgment of the Lord. How do you say? How do you say? We are wise, and the law of the Lord is with us. Lo, certainly in vain made he eat the pain of the scribe is in vain. Look at verse 12. In verse 12, it says. But they are ashamed when they have committed abomination. These people say they have faith. You find them in the offices. You find them in your community. You find them in your neighborhood. They profess faith. And yet when they commit abomination, there's no shame. They're used to it. Nay. They were not at all ashamed. Neither could they blush. Therefore shall they fall among them that fall. In the time of their visitation, they shall be cast down, says the Lord. Look at their lamentation on the final day, in the final verses of that chapter. In verse 20, the harvest is past. The summer is ended, and we are not sick. They realize too late. Although they have been claiming they had faith, they had faith, no works, no fruit, no deeds, 
no approval of their lives. The good they want to do, they cannot do. The evil they don't want to do is exactly what they do. Because the face cannot produce saving works. The harvest is past. The summer is ended. And we are not saved. For the heart of the daughter of my people and my heart. I am black. Astonishment has taken hold of me. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is the health of the daughter of my people not recovered? We're coming to John chapter 2, verse 23. John chapter 2, verse 23. Here are the people. I believe, I believe. They've been saying that for years, but we can't see any fruit of righteousness, any fruit of repentance, any fruit of the Spirit in his life. John chapter 2, verse 23. Now, when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover, in the feast day, many believed in his name when they saw the miracles which he did. But Jesus did not commit himself unto them. He didn't say, welcome. You're my disciples. Welcome. You're going to heaven. Welcome. I'm going to prepare a place for you. Welcome. You're now in the Bible-believing church. No, he didn't say that. He only said he believed. But there is no evidence of the believing. And so, Jesus did not commit himself unto them because he knew all men and needed not that any should testify of man for he knew what was in man. How do you describe such people? We're looking at 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 5. 2 Timothy chapter 3. And I'm reading from verse 5. It says in verse 5, Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, the power to be godly, the strength to be godly, the grace to be godly, righteous. They don't have, but they have a form of godliness. You can see that form in their outward expression. You can do that without living faith, lively faith, abiding faith, saving faith. You can see that they sing the songs, they quote the scriptures, and they appear to be among the people of God. They have a form of godliness, but deny the path thereof. From such, turn away. Turn away. If you are like that, the church ought to turn away from you. I pray you will not be like that. I said, I pray you will not be like that. And if you see people who are like that, they're only professing, they're professing. I'm one of you. I'm a believer. I'm a member. I'm deeper. But to see how shallow they are, and you see there is no grace in their lives, and you see that even the things they promise to do for the Lord, they don't have the power to do, the power to be godly, and the power to be gracious. Turn away from them. Titus chapter 1, verse 16. Titus chapter 1, verse 16. They profess that they know God. They profess their believers. They profess they have faith. But in works, they deny him, being abominable. Can you think about a person coming to a church like this for six months, for one year, and saying, I'm part of you, I have faith in God, I believe. 
every word of God. I'm one of you, and I'm joining my hands with you, earnestly contending for the faith, and defending the faith once delivered unto the saints. Can you imagine hearing abominable words from them? Abominable language from them. Can you imagine having a same partner out there with abominable action? Can you imagine sharing on WhatsApp and sharing on the media, sharing with another person abominable pictures? They're not real, they're not children of God. Their faith is dead. They profess that they know God. And sometimes when you discover where they're coming from, you're passing by that area, and they're coming out from a particular building. And you say, what? Let me wait, let me see. Can that be so and so? And you get near, and you look at him, and you look at her very well. Yes, says the man. And you say, good evening, brother. He says, uh, good evening. I saw you coming out of there, that place now. That's abominable. He says, brother, be praying for me. That's my weakness. I have faith. I believe. I'm a child of God. But you know, going to such places, that's my weakness. Dead face, dead man. They profess that they know God, but in works, they deny him. Being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work, reprobate. Jude chapter 1. In Jude chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 11. Jude chapter 1, verse 11. One to them. They have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for a word and perished in the gain scene of Corinth. These are sports in your feast of charity. They come, they come, they come. But they are sports in your feast of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth, without fruit, twice dead, twice dead, they were dead in sins and trespasses before. They came to Christ, they were quickened and made alive. They've gone back into their vomit. They are dead again, twice dead, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars, they wander from church to church. They wander from denomination to denomination. When you hear the message there, I can't stand that one. And so they go to another, and they say, this is okay for me now. And then one day, the preacher there preaches something about these wandering stars. They say, he's talking to me, he's talking at me. I cannot stay there. They go to another place, wandering stars, to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. I pray your faith will not be like that. And your faith will not be like that in Jesus' name. We're coming to point number two, the evidence and the discernment of faith through works. James chapter 2 verse 18. James chapter 2 verse 18. Yea, a man may say, thou hast faith and I have works. 
There are people that have the idea that you cannot have everything God has provided in the Word of God. You have faith, keep it to yourself. I have works, I keep to myself. Works, that's not my area. Fruit, that's not my area. Behavior, good behavior, that's not my area. Obedience, that's not my area. And submission to the word of God, that's not my area. You know my area? Faith. Faith is my area. I believe. Healing, I believe. Deliverance, I believe. Marriage, I believe. Miracle children, I believe. Raising the dead, I believe. In the name of Jesus, the power in the name of Jesus, that's what I believe. I have faith, you have works. He has works, you have faith. No, they do not stand alone. Works without faith is dead, dead works. Faith without works is dead, dead faith. Look at this, verse 18. Show me thy faith without works. You can't do that. Show me the wind without the breeze, without the freshness, without the blowing, without the, without the moving of the tree. You cannot do that. It's invisible. Faith is invisible without works. It's what you do. It's the expression, experience of your life. It's the fruit of your action that makes us to know you have faith. I will show thee my face, the only way it can be shown, by my works. I will show you my face, how? By my works. Look at this illustration in Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2. Here is how you see face. Here is how you show face. Here is how you can give the evidence that there is faith. Look at it. In Mark chapter 2, verse 3. And they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. Nobody told them to do that, but they had faith in Christ's ability, Christ's power, and Christ's authority. They had faith in Christ's anointing. And how do you know they had the faith, what they did? They wanted to get the man to Christ, and they couldn't because of the crowd. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed when in the sick of the palsy lay. Look at verse 5. When Jesus saw their faith by their action, by their action, persistent action, by their action, persevering action, by their action, practical action, when Jesus saw their face, he said to the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Son, thy sin be forgiven thee. Luke chapter 17. I'm reading from verse 11. He saw their faith. Saw their faith. How do you see face? How do you show face? By the works, by action. Luke chapter 17, verse 11. And it came to pass as I went to Jerusalem 
that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And he lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when Jesus saw them, he said unto them, Go, show yourselves unto the priests. He didn't touch them. He didn't even pray for them. But she said, Go and show yourselves unto the priests. We're asking for mercy. We're asking for miracle. We're asking for cleansing. We're asking for a change in our situation. Go show yourselves unto the priests. Lepers don't show themselves unto the priests except they are healed. But they had faith in the words of Jesus. Look at the latter part of verse 14. And it came to pass that as they went, they actually had the might and they had the purpose and they actually went to show themselves unto the priest. It was the expression of their faith. As they went, they were cleansed. It's the faith. The faith that is demonstrated by action. Look at verse um, 19 here. And he said unto him, the one that came back, Arise, go thy way. Thy faith has made thee whole. That's the evidence of the faith. When Christ speaks, and you say you have faith in him, you will do what he has said as the work accompanying the faith. In Acts chapter 16, Acts chapter 16, reading from Versace. Faith that's evidenced and discerned through works. Acts chapter 16, verse 30. And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. Verse 32. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord. You know, there are people, what I want is, I believe. I believe. Hear the word of God. Uh -uh. I believe. I believe. Sit down. Hear the word of God. Let the word that produces abiding faith, active faith, practical faith, enter into you. Uh -uh. I believe already. But you see the action of the man. He heard the word of God and with all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes. That's the work. He washed their stripes, the work of compassion and the work of being merciful and the work of sympathy with those who are suffering and was baptized and all his straightway. And when he had brought them to his house in the work of hospitality, in the past, he counted them as prisoners, but now he's a fellow believer. And because of that faith, you see the work that followed. He said, meet before them and rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. That's the evidence of the faith. Acts. 
chapter 19, reading from verse 18. Acts chapter 19, verse 18. And many that believed came. They believed. How are we going to know that? Their faith in Christ. Are we going to discern that? What evidence do we have that they actually believed? And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. And many of them also, which used curious arts, brought their books together and burnt them. That's the abiding work the appropriate works, the accompanying works that followed their faith. They brought their magical books together and bunch them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found each 50 pieces of silver. It's the action that shows that the faith is alive. John. Chapter 8, verse 11 and verse 12. John, chapter 8, verse 11 and verse 12. And she said, No, my Lord, I believe in you, you are my Lord. Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee, but go and sin no more. You are forgiven. Now show it by the life you live after that forgiveness. You are saved. Show it by the life you live after that salvation. Neither do I condemn you. Neither do I consign you to hell. But now go and sin no more. Then speak Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness. He that believes in me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. For Stachy, as he speak these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews who believed on him, if he continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. I pray we'll be disciples indeed in Jesus' name. Amen. Point number three, the exploits and the demonstration of faith with works. We're coming to James chapter 2. Verse 21, James chapter 2, verse 21, the exploits and the demonstration of faith was works. 21, was not Abraham a father justified by works when he had offered Isaac, the son, upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works? Faith wrought with his works? Faith demonstrated by his works? Faith doing exploits through his works action? And by works was faith made perfect? Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8. Hebrews 11, verse 8. By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive an inheritance, Obeyed, and he went out, not knowing whither he went. 
He was called to go out by faith. He went out. Go out. He went out by faith. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean sin, and I will receive you. The same commandment comes to us. Wherefore, come out from among the drunkards, from among the gangs, come out. From among the association, association of sinners, of deceivers, come out from among them, among the occultic, come out from among them, among the worldly wise, come out, touch not the unclean sin, and I will receive you. And the faith that has evidence and experience will be the faith that makes you to come out immediately like Abraham did and will be a father unto you and ye shall be my sons and my daughters says the Lord Almighty I pray your faith will produce action I said your faith will produce action and the evidence of faith will not be missing your life in Jesus name we are coming to Hebrews chapter 11 verse 17 Hebrews 11 verse 17 by faith Abraham when he was tried offered up Isaac and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. Understand here, by faith, the most precious thing he had, the most precious commodity he could lay claim to, and the most precious possession is Isaac. The Lord tried him and said, Offer up Isaac. And we're told he offered him up unto God, his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in I seek shall thy seed be called, accounting that God was able to raise him up from the dead, even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. He offered up his Isaac, and he received him back. It's by faith we offer to the Lord. And what we offer to the Lord, we receive back in multiplied folds in Jesus' name. First Kings chapter 17. By faith, you give it up. By faith, you offer it. And it is that kind of faith that has expression, that does exploits. First Kings chapter 17, verse 8. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, where belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I've commanded the widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose, he had faith. A widow woman is going to say me, what about that? He arose. A widow woman I've never met, I've never seen, you've commanded him, what's her name? He has not given the name, and so he arose. That's faith, that's faith. And he went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks, and he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And the widow woman did not say, I'm at the end 
of my provision. And you're asking me for water? Look at what God has done for me. Look at the situation in which I am. Look at my predicament. No, people of faith don't complain. People of faith demonstrate their faith. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and for my son, that we may eat it. Tell me, but you will not die. I say you will not die. It appears there's no work, no sustenance, no help, no hope no bank account and yet the lord is asking you even the little in your hand offer that i seek unto me by faith faith works and faith obeys and faith does something and elijah said unto her fear not and the lord is saying to you today fear not Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, after make for thee and for thy son. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste neither the cross of oil fail in your family in your life until the day that the lord sendeth rain upon the land how do you know that the woman actually believed by doing what the prophet had said look at it now in verse 15 and she went like abraham and she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he and her house did eat many days. The promise of God will be yes and amen in your life. But you know, we need to have practical faith, the faith that works. The faith that will not look at the littleness of what I have, and then I cannot be faithful, I cannot have faith. I cannot give anything to God anymore. Abraham gave by faith. This woman gave by faith. You will give by faith. And your cup will not run dry. Your barrel will not run dry. And the barrel of meal wasted not neither did the cross of oil fail according to the word of the lord which is speak by elijah the word of god will work in your life second chronicles chapter 20 second chronicles chapter 20 verse 3 and jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim the fast throughout all Judah. Look at verse 12. In verse 12 it says, O our God, what wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us, neither do we know what to do but our eyes are upon thee your eyes are upon the lord even when you do not have anything to show for it believe god the lord will turn the situation around in jesus name look at verse 20 and he rose early in the morning 
and they went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went, Joshua stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God. They were fearful. Believe in the Lord your God. Did you know what to do? Believe in, your, in the word of the Lord your God. And the enemies outnumbered them. Believe in the Lord your God. So shall ye be established. You are established in Jesus' name. Believe also in his prophets. And so shall ye prosper. Somebody there is going to prosper. Yeah. You will prosper in Jesus' name. Believe everything will be all right. Now, they were fearful before. They have been told now, believe. What's going to be the response to that word, believe? It's like they were sorrowful. They could have been crying. They could have been staying, saying, life is coming to an end. But now they are told, believe. When you believe, what are you going to do? Verse 21. And when they had consulted with the people, consulted with the people, do you believe? Yes, I believe. Do you believe? Yes, I believe. How do we show our faith? How do we demonstrate our faith? We were fearful before, but now we believe. We were sorrowful before, now we believe. And they consulted, what are we going to do? And he says, the appointed singers unto the Lord. You must do something that shows that you are believing. And that they shall praise the beauty of holiness. The problem was still there. She praised the beauty of his holiness. The enemies were still there. And the war was still there. The battle was still there. And the enemies still had their weapons in their hands. And they were ready to shoot. And they were ready to destroy Jehoshaphat and the people of Judah. And yet they said, we have believed because the Lord has given us the word. And they did something that showed they were believing that shall praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and to say, praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. Praise the Lord for his mercy endureth until this day. Praise the Lord for his mercy extends endureth until tomorrow. Praise the Lord for his mercy will endure until the end of your life. Praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. And when they began to sing as the evidence of their faith, when they began to sing and to praise as to the practical faith they demonstrated, the Lord sent ambushments against the children of Ammon. Your enemies are defeated. And Moab, they are all gone. And of Mount Seir, which were come against Judah. And they were smitten. And they are smitten. And they are destroyed. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of, of Mount Seir. And utterly, to utterly slay and to destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, every one of those your enemies held to destroy themselves, destroy one another. Their arrows will not touch you. Their spears will not touch you. Their magic will not come near your doorstep. And their messengers of death will never know the address of your house but they will destroy one another. And when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude, and behold, those your enemies, they were all dead bodies falling to the earth, and none escaped. And when Jehoshaphat and his people came, to take away the spoil of them, they found among them, they found among them, I find among them, you find among them, what? 
What are you finding? Abundance, both riches of the dead bodies and precious jewels, which they stripped off for themselves for the more than they could carry. More than you can carry. More than you ever desired. And they were three days in gathering the spoil, for it was so much. Blessings, for it was so much. Abundance, for it was so much. As it was, so it is today, so it will ever be. Faith, the faith that works, that will not cry anymore. The faith that will not complain anymore. The faith that will not weep anymore. The faith that will keep on singing. That will keep on rejoicing. That will keep on praising the Lord. And the beauty of holiness will be manifested in your life in Jesus' name. And the abundance of his blessing will be reflected in your life in Jesus' name. But this say faith we're, we're saved. By this faith, we're sanctified. By this faith, we're baptized in the Holy Ghost. By this faith, we're healed. By this faith, we're provided for. By this faith, we're blessed. By this faith, we're delivered. By this faith, we'll make it on the day of rapture. Receive that faith and should demonstrate that faith and your blessings will never come to an end in Jesus' name. Rise up and pray, but pray in faith. Rise up and tell the Lord what the need is, but tell him in faith. And after the prayer, let faith now keep on rejoicing. Let faith now keep on singing. Let faith now keep on praising the Lord. Open your mouth and tell the Lord, sage is by faith. You turn away from sin. Don't allow dead faith to continue. Faith must have the works. Faith must have the action. Faith must be shown by the transformation. Faith must be shown by the new character, by the new behavior. Faith for salvation. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And our faith produces corresponding action. Believe on the Lord and you'll be sanctified. That faith produces corresponding action. You love the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. Believe in the Lord. You'll be baptized in the Holy Ghost. That faith is revealed by the power that comes into your life. Believe God. He will meet all your needs. Believe God, impossibilities will be possible. Believe God, you will not lack. Believe God, He will supply all your needs according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Believe God. Enemies, visible, invisible, will be defeated. Accept what the Lord has given. Accept what the Lord has provided. Don't allow your faith to be dead faith. Faith without corresponding action. Faith without peace. Without joy. Faith without fruit. Faith without love. Faith without patience. Faith without long suffering. Faith without kindness. That's dead faith. If you say your sins are forgiven, show it by the life you live. You say you are saved, 
the sanctified, let it be lively face, active face. Show it by what that face produces. Your face, your fairness, you throw up timidity, you throw up cowardice, your face, your life will be active, your life will be powerful. There will be exploits of faith in your life, through your life. Your faith, there will be demonstration of that faith. You'll give cheerfully. You'll give happily. Your faith, you'll overcome temptation. You'll overcome the tempter. A face that overcomes. You'll be victorious. You'll no more be sad. Heavy hearted. Complaining. Your face. You'll have joy. You'll not be walking by sight. And no matter how many challenges you see, faith can sink. Faith can express joy, express happiness. Show the Lord your faith by your action. Show your friends your face by your action. Let that face have its permanent demonstration. Believe and all will be well. In Jesus' name I pray. Yeah. Did you pray in faith? Yeah. I said, did you pray in faith? Yeah. It will be done. Yeah. And you'll go on rejoicing knowing it is done already in Jesus' name. Amen. If you are asked for salvation, thank God you are saved. Amen. If you are asked for healing, thank God you are healed. Amen. If you are asked for provision, thank God it's done already in Jesus' name. Amen. Whatever promise of God you have asked for, for him to fulfill, thank God it is done. Yeah. I believe. Yeah. I believe. Yeah. I believe. Yeah. Your action, your response, your attitude, your excitement, your joy, the spring under your feet as you go back home will show that you really believe yeah. thank God I join my faith with your faith yeah. it is done yeah. father in the name of Jesus yeah. I pray for every brother and every sister I pray Lord nobody will go back home empty handed in Jesus name yeah. Your promises are yes and amen. You cannot fail, you will not fail. There is no disappointment in our God. 
and I pray for everyone from the youngest of us to the oldest of us, the men and the women, the boys and the girls, everyone. I pray, Lord, this evidence of faith will be a reality in every life in Jesus' name. Forgive those who have confessed and forsaken their sins. Sanctify the people that have laid everything upon the altar. Baptize the sanctified in the Holy Ghost. Heal those who are sick. Sickness will not kill them. This infirmity will not destroy them. What is called incurable diseases will not be part of their lives in Jesus' name. The diseases upon the Egyptians will not be upon the Israel of God. And therefore, Lord, as you have proclaimed that you are the Lord that healeth us, healing on everyone in Jesus' name. And I pray the arrows of the enemy will never get to any of your people. Deliver everyone from evil. And break every yoke in every life and destroy the works of the devil in every life. And all the arrows and the powers of Satan coming from the dark world will stop before it gets to them in Jesus' name. And for those who are living from hand to mouth, they are poor. Lord, let abundance come into their lives. Provide for everyone. We know that this prayer will not fail. We know that the face of your people will not be in vain. Let provision come to every life. Joy to every heart. Abundance to everyone. And victory to everyone in Jesus' name. Lord, your people will sing with joy. And as they go back home rejoicing, let the promises be going on, being fulfilled in every life. And as we come back another time, we'll come back with testimonies in our mouth. Confirm it, Lord, in every life. We thank you because our faith is alive. And the exploits of living faith will be upon every life. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah.